Hello, fam, fam. Good morning, afternoon, wherever you are. Whatever the time is, it's Maggie, your friend. I'm back again with um, continuing our series on how smart are you. If you recall, we talked about 12 points, 12 traits that smart people uh, exhibit. I guess you could call it that. situation 
these are people, I mean, I'm like that analytical, you know, if you need to put something down to say pros and cons, what are my options and what is the best decision. So that's why you have to give yourself time to think through things. You don't want to be reactive and, and act and impulsive, right? Because if you may, if you're impulsive, you may, might make the wrong decision. So following the crowd can be dangerous, right? Now we have to work in communities. We have to live in communities. We have families. I mean, we are surrounded by community. Community can take different forms. It's not just where you live, right? And when you live, if you think about it on your block, on, on your street, you have different kinds of people. Uh, you do have communities where the houses look the same, which, you know, I don't like that. But you have different people from different countries, from different uh, cultures, right? From different ages. So we're not uniform. Uh, there is no, it's not homogeneous, I guess that's the word I'm looking for. So as an individual, you have to be able to stand back and say, is this decision, am I following the crowd? Am I doing what is best for me? Sometimes you have to do things to benefit the larger group, right? And again, we can take the example of the pandemic. Getting vaccinated, and I'm not preaching to anyone, is not just because it's, it's, it's a good decision for you, but it's also because it will benefit the community. So sometimes you will make decisions that don't benefit just you. You may make some decision to benefit your family, depending on what um, what's going on. Uh, parents sometimes stay together, work things out to benefit the children. It's not always a bad decision. It shows that you're not selfish. But I think in terms of the herd mentality that is referred to in, in this way, talking about being smart, it's like you need to be able to stand on your own and not follow the crowd. And that also involves not looking for people to understand you, right? If they do, great. But if they don't, you don't want to spend a lot of energy trying to validate you as a human being to somebody else or to a group. Um, for example, if you're in a job, you want to be able to do your job to the best of your ability. I remember when I was younger and you know we had jobs, I was in college and I was working at that factory and there were some things that people were doing that just weren't right, you know, like taking longer breaks or picking up stuff that don't, didn't belong to them. I remember working at the hospital, people would take towels and sheets and stuff. And it's like, you have to be able to say, this is wrong. And then if everybody else is doing it, then they're looking at you like you're a sellout or you're not necessarily going to tell on them, but you're like, I have my own ethical principles. I roll differently than you guys. And that might cause you to be ostracized. They may not want to hang out with you. They may not invite you to the birthday party or to whatever they're doing. You have to be able to say, I'm standing on my principles. I don't need to be around you. I don't need your approval. That was number one, right? You have to be true to yourself because then you're comfortable with who you are. You, you're happy with your decisions. You sleep good at night. Your mind is clear because you're a very ethical person. You make the decisions when they need to be made and you don't worry about what people think. So a lot of this stuff, you know, are interrelated. So don't follow the crowd. And let's say in my age group, how would that relate? Um, one thing I'm thinking as I'm nearing retirement age, I'm like, I don't think I could live in a retirement community where I see all these older folks, they go to bingo every Wednesday, they go to the golf course every Tuesday, 
or they have these planned activities that everybody runs around doing the same thing. I'm a loner. I like to be on my own. I like to do my own thing. You don't have to be a loner to be uh, someone who's, you know, who doesn't follow the crowd. But you have to be okay with not going with everything that is going around you, going with the flow. I like to be with people sometimes, and I like to have my me time most of the time. So knowing who you are and not having to explain yourself to people, you know, you grow. You can make your own decision. You don't need approval. You don't need to follow the crowd. You don't need to do what everybody else is doing. You get the gist of it, right? And number six was related to like number four, I think, is that smart people will not stay in a job and stay stuck, right? Stuck means that you have no other options. You are obligated to stay with this job that absolutely you don't like. You are afraid, okay? The reason you're stuck most of the time Number one is that you haven't positioned yourself in a way that gives you options, okay? Let's say you haven't kept up with your education. You have not gotten continuing education and staying abreast of what's going on around you or in your field. Uh, but number two, I think is the most important thing is that you're afraid. People, some people, not people, are afraid of change and you have examples of your parents for example who've been working for this company for 30 years now they have not um, explored any other options they have not improved on their skills right they only know how to operate this machine they only know they've only worked with this hospital doing this job for 30 years so in this environment that we're in where everything is moving and changing they are afraid of the computer they're not able to use any social media they're just so single focused we have blinders on and then when something happens maybe there is a job restructuring they lose their job and boy oh boy it's mayhem it's drama they are just totally helpless and they lose hope because you have not again invested in you right so in order for you not to get stuck in a job you have to be aware of what's going on with you you have to educate yourself my god there is so much online that you can do you can educate yourself even before the pandemic you didn't have to go somewhere the university to to, to self-improve you can take online classes you can join uh, our facebook groups you can read you can listen to podcasts my god if somebody in this day and age stays stuck in a job because they are under trained that they, they don't have the skills it's on you it's on you don't you dare blame anybody don't blame the system. Don't blame the employer who had to let you go because of restructuring. That's another thing. I have been a business person. I understand that sometimes you have to let people go. People get all bent out of shape and upset. And I'm like, this is a business. It's not a charity. You have to make the tough decision sometimes. I have had to fire people. That is one of the worst things you can do to a human being. Looking in their eyes and say, I'm sorry, I have to let you go. But you have to have the courage. Courage is something that you have to develop if you don't already have it. Because you're gonna to have to make decisions that require that you be strong, that you make some decisions that are gonna hurt you and, and people, but you gotta do it. You gotta do it, all right? So remember, number five is that you do not follow the crowd. You can stand on your own. You don't have a herd mentality. Number six is that you do not want to stay in a job that you don't like. You do, do not ever want to feel stuck in any situation, relationship, job, or otherwise. All right, guys, this is all I have today. God bless you. I love you. Au revoir.
À la prochaine.